Okay, so our video today is just going to be a mini lesson reviewing standards 8NS1, which we find here, then 8NS2, 8EE1, and 8EE2. So 8NS1, these are problems that deal with rational and irrational numbers. We want to be able to classify them as one or the other. And also, we're going to see problems that are going to convert between fractions and decimals. I'm running out of space. There we go. And so our problem number one, we're just going to review a few of these. These come from your workbook. And you've worked through many of these, but this is just going to be a review. So problem number one, what is the difference between a rational number and an irrational number? So let's just go ahead and define a rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio. And we're going to think fraction. Now there's two types of decimals. It could be a repeating decimal, and it could be a terminating decimal. An irrational number is a decimal that is non-repeating non-terminating so in other words an irrational number cannot be written as a fraction okay so we're going to look at this problem number three um, we're going to select all numbers that are rational. They can be written as a fraction, as in a ratio. So the first one is 3. We could write it as 3 over 1. So yes, that one is rational. This next one, 3.75 repeating, it is a repeating decimal. So it can be written as a fraction. Now we have this one, negative square root of 2. And if you were to type negative square root of 2 in your calculator, you would get negative 1.4142. And it keeps on going all the way across your screen. It never ends. It never repeats. So it is an irrational number. Now this next one is already in a fraction form. And it's just a number divided by a number. So it is rational. This last one's tricky because it looks like a fraction, but it includes this little um, number pi. And so when we say pi divided by 2 in our calculator, we get a decimal that never ends and it never repeats. 1.5707 dot dot dot. It keeps on going. And it is irrational. Number 6. Select all the equations that correctly relate a decimal to a fraction or mixed number. So we're just going to see if these are true. Is it true? So the first one, 2.5, is it equal to 25 divided by 10? So we'll just go to our calculator and divide 25 by 10. And we do get that that's 2.5, so yes, that's true. 6 and 8 fifths. Well, that would be 6 point something. When I say 8 divided by 5 in the calculator, I get 1.6. So I have 6.0 plus 1.6, which is 7.6. That is not equal, so it's not true. 37 ninths. 37 divided by 9 is 4.11111, which would be 4.1 repeating. That is true. Square root of 5 is 2.236 dot dot dot. It's a decimal that never ends. We want to know is it equal to 2 and 2 fifths? 
which we get 2.4. It is not. They're not the same. And 1.25 repeating is very close to 5 fourths, but 5 fourths is 1.25, and that is not the same as 1.25 repeating. So all of these problems were just checking in the calculator, were they true or false? Okay, our next standard, 8NS2, found in your workbook. This standard is just about comparing and ordering numbers, especially square roots. It does include other types of numbers but uh, when you compare and order them, but we're dealing with knowing where a square root falls on a number line or what numbers it falls between. So our first problem we're going to do is this number 2. It says place a point where you think negative square root of 5 would go on a number line. So I'm going to start in my calculator and I'm just going to type in negative square root of 5 and I get negative 2.23 dot dot dot. It keeps on going. But what I need to notice is that this is negative 2 point something. It's going to be between negative 2 and negative 3. So when I look on my number line, negative 2 point something will be somewhere around here. It's a little closer to negative 2 than negative 3. Number 4, in which list are the numbers in order from least to greatest? So they all use the same numbers. So let's just go through and change them all to decimals. So we'll start with pi. It's about 3.14. We know that's an approximation, not exact, but it's about. It's not exactly 3.14. Then 11 thirds. So we'll just go to a calculator and say 11 divided by 3. And I get 3.6 repeating. Square root of 11. We go to a calculator and we get a decimal 3.31 dot dot dot. It keeps on going, does not end, does not repeat. And then our last number 3.5, it is already a decimal 3.5. So let's go through and put these in order from least to greatest. They all differ in the tenths place. We have 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, so these will be easy to put in order from least to greatest. Our smallest is 3.14, our second smallest, 3.31, our third smallest, 3.5, and then our largest, 3.6. And we're just looking at the tenths place because that's where they differ. And so um, the one that puts those in order, pi, then square root of 11, then 3.5, then 11 thirds is answer choice C. Number 12, between which two integers does negative square root of 46 appear on the number line? So we could just type this in our calculator and we see that it comes out to this decimal, negative 6.78 dot dot dot, because it keeps on going. It's not ending as a non-terminating and it's not repeating. But what we see is it's negative 6 point something. So it's going to be between negative 7 and negative 6 because it's negative 6 point something. It's uh, negative 6 is lower than or is a greater number than it actually and negative 7 is a smaller number than it but it falls between those two integers.